Romans 5. Romans 5. From verse 2. Through whom, Jesus Christ, we have gained access by faith. Through Jesus Christ, we gained access by faith into the grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope. We boast in the hope of the glory of God. We boast in the hope of the beauty, the awesome splendor of God. Not only so, but we also glory, we also praise, we also brag, we also boast in our sufferings. Why? Because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance. Perseverance produces character. And character produces hope. Hope. Oh, I, I must grow in my character, not just so that I have a very wonderful, beautiful character. But if I see that I more and more I have the character of God... God is my eternal hope, but also my hope of glory. A hope that life can be beautiful because glory is His beauty, His splendor. This glory of God, this awesome splendor of God. You have a hope that life can be awesome and that the splendor of God can be seen through your life. And that hope you have. Not first of all hope that things will change. But hope assured that you will see the splendor of God. That you will see the beauty of God. If what? If what? Let's just go back again. If we understand we've gained access by faith through Jesus Christ. Into this grace. Into this ability. Grace is God's ability. In which we now stand and we boast in this hope of knowing that we will be able to see His beauty, His splendor. Amen. But also then we understand the suffering. We understand because suffering is a process. Let's say suffering is a process and it has a purpose. So it doesn't matter what you go through, it can have, it can have purpose if you have the right attitude. If you have the right perspective, understanding how you can see more and more and more of what life is all about. You brag in your sufferings because you know that suffering produces perseverance. That you will be able to not just endure. In perseverance you will be able to stand. You will have this pioneer spirit. I want to say in perseverance it's like this pioneer spirit. You can break through. And not just break through because you have a struggle. Break through the new ground for others to follow. For all others to follow in that place. Perseverance that produces character. That is the character of God. And when the character of God is seen, He is seen. And He is called our eternal hope. And hope does not put us to shame. Because He has the name, Jesus Christ. Because God's love has been poured out into your hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Poured out by the Holy Spirit. The heart of God is poured out into you. This heart of love. This heart of love. And because God is doing it, you don't have to perform for God for, through His Spirit to pour out the love of God into your heart. But give yourself for the process. Because His grace is not given to you in vain. His grace, Paul says, I've worked with the grace. Grace is not just first of all, not at all, to miss hell and go to heaven. Amazing ability that saved a wretch like me. God gave me that ability that I will understand how not just to be saved from hell. Because I believe in him. But faith is a gift. I'm running through a lot of scripture. That is Ephesians 2. Faith as a gift from God. Why? No, but you must walk by faith. 
How can faith be a gift? Because this is a gift. This is the greatest gift given to you. The word of God. The greatest, greatest, greatest gift. Because this word in the flesh, Jesus Christ, was given by the Father to you. So how can faith be a gift? Because this is a gift and faith comes from this gift. Faith is through hearing. Hearing is through the word of God. The greatest gift given to you, the word of God, it can produce faith. So faith in itself stay with this awesome, awesome gift from God. And when you draw faith from this gift from God, from the word, the word says, God is pleased with faith. And the righteous, when you have a standing with God, you will walk by faith. You will walk through the fruit of this word, through the result of the word of God in you. Let's say faith is the result of the gift of God, his word for me. Amen. Are you still here? <laughs> oh, that man is a European man. That's why he says that. <laughs> okay 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 i will just stop there after that one <laughs> just quickly with day words it's not a theology i believe it's a prophetic tool that god has given us that could be very helpful even for the church in the future even as people there in the middle east said yo the church needs this needs this it's about the dead works or good works Good works, Ephesians 2.10, we are his workmanship, created to do. You are created to work, work not as a curse. So when you serve, when you work, you understand that you were created also to work. And through your work, you also worship. Let's say, I worship through my work. Worship is not, first of all, just a song that I sing. It's the lifestyle that I live. And some of the proof in the pudding, if I can say it like that, is through my work. If my work can be all as if unto the Lord. That's the definition in the worship. And then your worship is tested if you are a true worshiper. When? When you feel like slaughtering your boss. And you still do it as if unto the Lord. Oh, what an awesome, deep, mature worship you bring unto him. When you feel fed up, when you feel I don't want to, but you still do it as if unto the Lord. That is somebody that is maturing, maturing as a worshiper in spirit and truth. Are you with me? You will do it as if unto the Lord. Even though still I will have a cook. Even though this is not right, still I will honor him. May that part be part of your life. So you are his workmanship created to do, to do the works that he prepared you to do. And sometime he has prepared for you on that day just to be still and to do nothing. What you would have normally done. But just maybe to pray. And then the other day, you must do by faith what you normally would never do. Because God is jealous for your worship and your love. So many times, if you want to do his will, you will be challenged to do certain things that would you not would want to do. Because he's not first of all worried with your circumstances. He's involved with you with you he's using your circumstances and in every situation your success or failures he will turn it for the good for those who love him amen what the enemy whatever hell want to bring you you focus on him as a worshiper in spirit and truth everything can be the servant for the purposes of god in your life you have the mind of Christ in your spirit. You do hold the thoughts, the feelings, and the purposes of God. 
in your spirit. So the purposes of God with your life, the purposes of, of God for nations, the purposes of God for the city is in the heart of the church. It's in the heart of people like you and me. The purposes of God. So when things out there, then nothing makes sense. Nothing makes sense. The church is supposed to bring the purpose from heaven into the situation. You're supposed to bring the purpose of God into the situation. Overall, we're talking about the mind of Christ, that you can think like he thinks. What is God thinking? What is his opinion about the situation in the country? His opinion about Bluefontaine. And that is where you're not sitting in the office and just hear the commands from God. That is where he knocks at the door. And he's coming in to commune with you. To have a meal with you. And around the meal, it's a conversation. But I meet your yourselves. Where he just wants to share his heart with you. Where he wants to be with you. And he wants you to speak to him. And he wants to speak to you. But not in the context, first of all, as a boss and a servant. Trust God that we will get out of, that you will get out of this performance thing. Performance thing. If the word says we will be a slave to sin or a slave unto Christ, a slave unto Christ is driven by a relationship. A slave unto the world is driven by lust and a destructive fire. This is driven by a purifying, beautiful fire. A fire that leads to beauty. A fire that leads to destruction. Why well, you can still be saved as through fire, the word says in Corinthians. Are you with me? But fire you will have. Fire you will have. Fire my brother and my sister, you will have. If you don't choose the fire of God, the enemy can choose his fire for you. So protect yourself against the destructive fire from hell and the enemy by running into the fire of God. Let's say, I will protect myself from destructive fire. By running into the fire of God. You fear this fire? No. The word says, oh, somebody give me that scripture. You're supposed to fear the one where you, your soul could be thrown into hell. Into the fire. The destructive fire. You're supposed to fear in the sense of not... Run away. The fear that draws you to Christ. The fear of God. The respect for God. The honoring of God. That fear that can come on you. That because of your respect for him. You are given permission through the blood of Christ to enter. Because you know how to have manners in his presence. For the father, his children will have manners. They will have manners. Why? Because they have respect for him. Because they have respect for his, their father, Father God. Where do we practice that with one another? I want to kill you, but I need to respect the one living in you because he's my master. He's my master. He's my king. My master and my king is living in you. And because I respect him, because I honor him, I need to handle you with care. So I'm speaking on behalf of you also. No, don't just look at me. We all with one another. And ah, hallelujah, God must help us with that. Paul says what? Is that 1 Corinthians 2, 2? Oh, man, I must get to the day words. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 2. Is it 2, verse 2? I've decided to know nothing among you. The Corinthians that had all these issues with one another. The one is more spiritual than the other one. Greeting one another in tongues. And this and this and that. All this stuff. 
And Paul says, I don't want to know about all the fights. I don't want to know about, about your issues. I don't want to know about all the petty things. He says, I want to know nothing among you except Christ and him crucified. I don't want to take it further to say, my brother, where is Christ among you? First of all, Christ is in your spirit because your spirit is perfect. It can be immature, but it's perfect. Your spirit can be immature, but it's perfect. And it will stay immature where, where your spirit will never speak. Never speak. Because you are bullying your, your true self with the robbies in your soul. With the emotions, with the tantrum, with the thought patterns, with the strong personality, or the immaturity or superiority, whatever thing you want to have in your soul. And your life can be solely till you die. But because you are born again, you'll go to heaven, even though for your whole life on earth, your spirit was immature. But when you make your spirit strong by praying in the spirit, by getting into the word, your spirit become alive because your spirit is responding with the Holy Spirit, responding with the word, responding with the mind of Christ revealed. You want to know what is the communication from your, your spirit? What is the brain in your spirit? The brain in your spirit is God's brain. If I can use it like that. It's the mind of Christ that is in your spirit. Never revealed. Will never be revealed if you never look at what is in his mind. So mind your manners, tell your neighbor. <laughs> what does that mean even? That means go and revisit how you have no manners or have some good manners. Or Okay. Are you with me? Are you with me? So my brother, my sister, once again, like even last night we heard with some of the guys that spoke. Let's make sure that we are consumed with him. Not what's happening there, what's happening there, what's happening there. You need to know the mind of God. You need to allow the mind of God. So that means you need to know what is in your spirit. You know the feelings, the thinking, and the purposes of God. You come into a place, you open your mouth, and there's purpose there's purpose people hear purpose that's from heaven that's where he wants us to be and how he wants us to be amen so we are actually with ephesians 2 10 that we are his workmanship created for the good works created to do the works that he has prepared for us to do in advance so your father has prepared for you something to do and like we always say when you come to your father and your father tells you, I have prepared for you something to do, if you have at least 10% manners, you will ask, what is it, father? Or he will say, I have something for you to do, and you will just flat ignore him and say, God, help me with this, help me with this, help me with this, I trust you for this, I trust you for this, I need your breakthrough, I praise you, I love you, I honor you. And thank you that you helped me with this. And what is the father saying? A, a, a earthly father. You say, I'm speaking to you. I communicated first. I said, I have something prepared for you to do. And that is just, I call it also extra oil. That in advance, God speak to me about that day. Give me a sentence, give me a scripture about that day in April. That's what you ask in December. Oh, in the, in whatever, you can do it tomorrow for the next six months. Write it down. All I can say about the watch again, so many times, and even in the one scripture, maybe tonight or tomorrow we will talk about it, when God said, watch out here, watch out there, watch and pray. It's not about just see the enemy 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 
Remember what we said about in Zechariah, where God said, Behold the man. And in the context it was, Behold the man, watch the man, look at the man, keep inside the man. I know, if you remember it from last time, don't write it down. If you didn't remember it, write it down. Repent and write it down. And we said, watch the man. And my brother, my sister, in the watching, watch, it's like, there could be a snake, there could be a snake, there could be a snake. No, watch the one where he will guide you, and you don't have to worry about the snake. But if you must walk, and the whole time watch out for the snakes, you're going to stumble over, over a stupid stone. Are you with me? You're going to stumble over some innocent stone that had no agenda with you. <laughs> you know? Because you're watching what snakes are there with agendas. What this, what that, what that. But watch the man. Watch him is that you give that absolute focused attention for a sudden move. Watch, watch. In that context of the end time where there's so many times where Jesus said, watch, is that suddenly there will be this fake, this, uh, what is a false Christus? Uh, false Christ. No. It's like the Antichrist, eh? Yeah. One will came, come and say he's the Christ. And that's not necessarily that there's suddenly 10 people that say, I'm the son of God, I'm the son of God, I'm the son of God. It's the one, it's many that will come in the name of the Lord and saying, Christ is saying this, but that's not what Christ is saying. So he's coming as a representative of Christ. He's coming as an ambassador of Christ. But you need to distinguish the spirit that is actually demonic. Even if he presents himself as an ambassador of Christ, presents himself as he's coming in the name of Jesus Christ. But now, how will I distinguish the bad if I don't understand the good? How will you know it's a fake ten rand if you don't know the, the true ten rand? It's impossible. The fake, you will be deceived. You will live in the fake of Christianity. You will live in the fake in a fake walk with God. If I never take hold of the genuine, the true walk with God. Are you with me? Please, my brother, my sister, ask Holy Spirit to make it real. Like Gregor said last night, it must be real. Otherwise, it's, it's not worth it. If God as the real God is not in it, then it's fake. It's, it's not worth it. So may God help you, but watch the man. Is that sudden move, that sudden move, hey? And when he says, remember what we said? When he says, behold the man. Behold has the context of worship. Wow about Jesus. Wow about Jesus. Behold, everybody say, behold the man. That's why I also say, behold the lamb. Wow about the Lamb and what He has done through the cross. Amen. Amen. So it's worship the one. Behold the man, watch the man for that sudden move. And then look at the man. And that is in your normal walk with God. In your normal walk with God. Look at the man. Look at him in creation. Look at him in situations. Look at him in your brother, in your sister. Look at him in your husband and in your wife. Look at him in your own life. Look at him when you look in the mirror. Hello? You need to look at him. And then the last one, keep him in sight. So it's watch the man, Jesus Christ, for sudden move. It's behold the man, as you worship him. It's look at the man in your daily walk. And it's keep him in sight. The keeping in sight is when you really don't understand what he's doing. You will be able to keep him in sight. Make sure you are attentive where he is. 
It's not just, I'm going through a situation, now I'm crying out unto the Lord. You're supposed to follow, you were supposed to follow him. They actually followed the cloud and the, and the cloud of, uh, pillar of fire up to the place of the Red Sea. It wasn't at the Red Sea, oh, where's God? We need to call on him now. So keep him in sight. Like the Israelites, even for 40 years, when they messed up, then for 40 years still they had to keep him in sight, even for the sake of their children and their grandchildren, where they stood and they were in, at least encouraged by the fact that my children and my grandchildren will inherit Canaan. My brother and my sister, you won't believe it, but for that generation that died in the desert, that was a major, major, major encouragement. Think of yourself if you messed up. And God says, my provision will be there for you until you die. But, but I will still release all the promises on your children and your grandchildren. That is one major encouragement. Are you with me? And in that context, for you to make sure when you feel I've missed it, you don't look down. You keep him in sight because he will take you through the cross, through forgiveness, into that what God has for you. Amen.